because all things are yours and so those two years some things I've never shared with my family till today some things I hid from them I had to hide it because if you tell some people something, they'll say no God forbid ministry it's not like here in Abuja where you finish and they'll give you one hot seat go to the northeast go to the north you are living among people who are and, and I love everybody watching from the north I still love you I'm coming back don't surround my house they don't know my house anyway but the truth is among in the north poverty has so dealt with them the force of poverty and ignorance so much that they feel entitled to everything so preach to me heal me deliver me get me saved and then give me food and still clap for me for eating that's the knot for you if you can survive there if you can heal from bitterness and anger from that and come to a point where you what you have freely received you give without looking for anything back then you have come into the consciousness of all things are yours for you are Christ so let your sense of worth and value be in this scripture you say all things are yours for you are Christ and God wants us to begin to learn how to be content and satisfied with Christ and nothing more am I saying don't pray to have things of course have them but let's not build our reputation build our life around it because I get text messages from people and say God never pick my call what do you mean by God never pick your call because you've not bought a car because you don't have a job you're not married at 40 God never pick my call what is rest in the kingdom is rest having many things and living in a great mansion and having billions in your account and just having everything so God has brought me into rest no because when you read Joshua chapter 21 verse 44 and 45 the Bible says that God brought them into rest and all, their, all the promises he gave them came to pass but in Judges chapter 1 there were still nations that were not conquered they had not subdued the Canaan completely yet in Joshua the Bible was talking about God bringing them into rest so then what is rest maybe rest is simply coming into a full consciousness of all that God has said concerning you and becoming satisfied with it and using that to redefine your identity and projecting that identity to your world so whether you have so much or you have little you are the same person whether you fail or you succeed and in the kingdom there's nothing like failure I told my people in Medugri, at best, call it wrong attempt. Don't call it failure. Because the Bible says we know that all things work together for good. Sometimes you fail to learn. David said in Psalms 119, it was good for me that I was afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. So we say success or failure. Because you think, <laughs> no. So this was... What I'm summarizing to you is my dealings in the past seven years. And God brought me to a point where I was not living for anybody or anything again. And I, I, if God leaves me in that desert there, I remain there. My fulfillment came from knowing that when I return back home every Sunday, that I did a good job. And you know, God's marking scheme, if he shows you, you will tear your answer script and throw it away. It's just like somebody taking a book to the exam hall to copy. And after copying and he sees that I'm, I'm closing here now. He feels that he has gotten the best. Then he submits and then the teacher comes in and says, hey, hey. And they said that the question leaked. So that exam you wrote is cancelled. Now everybody I will vigilate the exam. You know that's trouble. That's how God's marking scheme is. So we look at what people are doing, look at this one, and we are trying to borrow everything and put everything together, hoping that you make God proud. And God is looking at you. 
And God is saying, no. It starts from understanding your identity. And when I talk about identity in Christ, don't trivialize it to say, oh, it's just I'm a new creation. No, no, it's more than that. No, no. It's built on that, but it's more than that. It's becoming satisfied with who God says you are or who you see yourself to be in him and living with dominion from that perspective that you know what there can be dangote there can be ote dollar there can be this one that but there is no one like me in christ and if something happens to me now and i die well don't call it die i translate no matter how many people are born nobody will be able to project the unique revelation of christ that was seeded into me predestined before time there's something that God fixed in you. There's something he put in you. The Bible says his glorious rich, the glorious riches of his inheritance in, in the saint, in, in. It's God that has the inheritance, not really you. It's God that has the inheritance. He paid everything. He gave all by giving himself just so he can purchase you as his priceless possession. And now in you, he has given all things to exist in. And here you who gave you the right to say that you are a failure because of man's perspective where was that man when Jesus died for you this generation now if you are not on TV or not on social media are not successful how about missionaries in the bush discipling people that may never come in contact I'm from the bush I'm from the desert so you Abuja you <laughs> eh? who went to Bill two months ago some of you don't even know where that place is Bill we'll go to Askiraoba we'll go to uh, yeah we're going to Askiraoba early next year work is already on ground we'll go to Marama we're going to Yola okay some of them know Yola at least you can fly to Yola <laughs> 